all that I ever knew I could be was kind. Just be kind, everybody. Be kind. It's clear that Everything Everywhere All at Once is the greatest Asian American movie ever made, but is it possibly one of the greatest movies ever, period? Let's talk about why it might just be. Oh man, this movie has been going viral for like the past year, Andrew. They just won some Golden Globes onto the Oscars, but we gotta talk about it, Andrew. Why is this probably for a lot of people the best Asian American movie ever, right? That's probably been established. To be fair, there haven't been a lot of other ones. It just had to beat CRA basically, right? But um, is it one of the best movies ever, period? Well, I'll tell you this. It's got one of the most rabid fan bases. One of the directors, Daniel Kwan, had to go out on Twitter and calm the fans down and be like, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, you can stop spewing hatred towards the people who are criticizing the movie. Everybody can have their view on the movie. Thank you. There were so many great movies this year. I'm glad that you guys love our movie, but just please calm down. People are willing to <laughs> die for Yo, this they're movie. Like, no, don't you ever say and, anything and about And I can you. see why. Honestly, Initially, I was kind of like surprised by this whole cultish following, but after seeing, you know, Ki Hui Kwan's, you know, um, acceptance speech and his post award sort of speeches, same with Michelle Yeoh, it really touched me and I was like, man, this is the one. So just quickly, thank you, Hollywood Foreign Press, for giving me this honor. It's been an amazing journey and incredible fight. And we got to talk about the five reasons, Andrew, why everything everywhere, oh, you know, all at once is the one. All right. So, guys, if you are as excited about this video and you want more people to watch it, please do us a favor and hit that like button right now for the algorithm's sake. But, David, let's get on to reason number one out of five. It is technically an incredible movie. It's technically the best Asian American movie, but I think in terms of technical film work, storytelling, drawing all the layers together, we're talking about like the craft of filmmaking. Oh this is it's probably incredible. one of the most well-crafted no. movies ever made from any country. Bro, to have that many different scenes, multiverses, costume, different scenes and everything, like, and then to have it all make sense and you didn't lose track. That yeah. was the greatest thing is that you saw all these different backdrops, but it wasn't that confusing. Yeah, I said that people were saying it was absurdism, existential nihilism, filial piety, Bro, Confucianism, every, every. East meets West sort of like cultural conflicts. And I think that there were so many aspects into it where it made people cry, but then it was kind of absurd like Rick and Morty. And then there was Kung Fu and then there was the Matrix, but it, it all came together. So a technical masterpiece and for it to be attached to an Asian storyline with all Asian actors, big deal. Yeah. Moving on to number two, Andrew. Oh, I got to, I can't. We can't forget to mention it. A lot of Asian hipster fans or representations on the internet, they were previously always critical of Asian works, Andrew. They had the heart in the right place, but a lot of times the production value is not there. Mm. And that's kind of true, right? Because our community is like kind of far behind in terms of getting the production values. Yeah, there. which leads to point number two, that given how much it costed to make the budget of the movie, it was extremely successful. One of the most successful. The only movie that it did not outgross was Crazy Rich Asians. Right. But that's a pretty high fee. But who knows? I mean, it's still going. Yeah. And it already 10 x So you don't know about the streaming Guys, sales and stuff like that. it only costed $15 million to make, honestly. And I know $15 million to a regular person obviously is a lot. But in the movie sense, it's not. And I think they're going to value this success. First of all, shout out to CRA. Shout out to John Chu. Andrew, shout out to your... Point three second cameo oh, in CRA. Three frames, but, but, I'm in it, but background. That 10X on the box office that they had versus the cost, people are going to be like, yeah, but it was kind of a cheesy movie like Ja Rule's music or Flo Rida's. They're going to view um, uh, everything everywhere all at once, almost more like Good Kid, Mad City from Kendrick Lamar, yeah. where it's a little bit more of an underground sound, way more hipster, but it is like lauded oh. and approved more by the taste makers, uh, uh, by the Lower East Side, yeah. Williamsburg, Silver Lake. Hey. Taste maker hipsters. And let me tell you this, player. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Probably a lot more like Nas Illmatic, too. Yeah. You know, first album. Still a legend. Always a legend. Just painted. Just changed. No I think features. It, yeah, because I think people said, yo, between the meaning of the movie and the artistry on the back end mm -hmm. of this movie, it, like, blew my mind. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Also, I do think there's a thing where it's like Asians generally uh, approve something that's, like, become mainstream well, successful. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Guys, uh, the next point is that, you know, it just had this legendary star from Asia who has had such a, actually illustrious, great career, but mostly over there, a little bit over in America. And then now she kind of like is, I guess, reaching her global peak in Michelle Yeah, oh, Yeah, you're talking about like, the Yellow Queen. Yo, this is, 
Queen, Queen B, Michelle, like Asians were looking for a queen. Yeah. We needed a Beyonce. We needed a Madonna. We needed somebody, a woman that was so strong and undoubtedly talented yeah. and classy. And she, yeah. And she also does call out racism too. Yes. And classy. Her, yeah. Yeah. Her and Ki Hui Kwan, who was obviously was data from Goonies. He had a 35 year spell in his career where he's like, Hollywood didn't want me. But I'm back. Thank you. <laughs> and he's so grateful and he kind of acts like a cartoon character. But I'll say back to Michelle Yo, I think that her classiness, sort of being this in her real life, but also her portrayals, this like elite woman from like colonial Indochina. Mm -hmm. If you guys know about that region, it's like it's about when the British mm -hmm. colonized Southeast Asia yeah. or, or parts of Asia, but it's like people were still able to rise up through that system and they represent this classiness and almost like a a blend of East and West that it took like a hundred years to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you don't, yeah. I mean, don't let's credit. I mean, we got to give the British some credit. Cause I think that's where obviously some of her accent comes from. Some of her mannerisms are British. Yeah, yeah. Well, she went to boarding school over in Britain. And I do want to say, let's not forget that after all the roles she's played that people knew to see her as like a poor lower middle-class mother was extremely interesting yeah. because you saw her just the last time you saw her essentially was crazy rich Asian. And she was the richest woman in Singapore. Right. And then now she's playing like this poor uh, Asian Chinese. Like, and, and she Chinese does carry American herself woman. very much like a yeah. queen. When yeah. she was like on Letterman back in the day when she's like, Jackie, it's a chauvinistic pick. <laughs> hey. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Key too. And Key, his whole story arc of his goal, you know, being in data from the, data from the Goonies. Yeah. And, and then, he talks about being rejected for yeah. many years. And then now he's like, Evelyn, you're entering the third multiverse. And then it's just like now he's this big star, and hopefully the roles that he has next are are also. Really and big. Stephanie Stu's uh, Stephanie Stu's oh, story as well, yeah, yeah. capturing a lot of different markets. Point number four, Andrew. It's just this mishmash of old and new, just like this irreverent attitude. And people really, when they see something that's a mishmash of things that influence their identity but have never been put together, they just are ready to die for it. I saw this same thing with Tyler, the creator, Kid Cudi, Kanye, Pharrell, Childish Gambino, a.k.a. Donald Glover. Their fan bases are like rabid. And I can see why Daniel Kwan, the director, actually had to tell him, oh, hey, guys, chill out, chill out. If people don't like the movie, yeah. they don't get it. It's all good. Don't, don't need to come I, for their heads. I, I think it's one of those movies that a lot of people, even though they love it, I don't think they want to see a sequel get ruined. They don't want to see like this turn into like a cartoon and then it kind of bring down the whole brand of it all. Like I think it almost standing as this like gold standard for what movies are now is like perfect. And it should probably just stay that way. Do you think that people who previously felt unseen, like kind of like Asian geek, hipster, like, but um, artistic people, like, they felt seen by this movie. Oh, dude, for sure, man. And, I mean, I think there's so many different layers to it that you can relate to, um, whether it's the uh, mother-daughter aspect, father-husband-wife uh, aspect that they're kind of disconnected. And then you even have the grandfather in there. You have the... Uh, the uh, LGBT daughter, right? And then her whole story. And well, then, she has an interracial LGBT yeah, and relationship. And then, and then it's finances and all this other stuff. Um, unfulfilled dreams of the mother. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, the American dream not always fully yeah. being the American dream. Even uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is sort of like, I hate my job as a tax woman or whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, dude, there was just so many layers. There was a lot of different stories, lines. Um, and then point number five, David, just to kind of sum it all up, the fifth reason why it is going to be such a legendary movie for uh for years to come and it's going to be the gold standard for especially asian movies but maybe any movie ever yeah. um is that just like it was inspirational to women it's inspirational to asian asian women and honestly asians just needed something that non-asians thought was really cool right legitimately not like, like they, they were the, they're forced like, to embrace it out of like diversity reasons like, like like cra crazy rich asians we can all agree was like a fun movie but, like, I don't think young, cool, stylish, like, hipster, non-Asians you know, cared about Lake that Williamsburg, movie. You know, the Silver Williamsburg, yeah. No, but, like, they're, everybody... Austin, Texas. Everybody, all at once, is looking at everywhere all at once. Yeah. Like, it's a massive. And I don't want to say, like, for example, I was talking to my Viet friend and my Cambodian friend the other day from yeah. back home. They didn't even know this movie existed. They, they missed it. Yeah, because yeah, they, they, were they, they were just like, what? Well, they're oh, not they're... in the conversations. They probably don't follow those accounts. They're not tapped into like Asian media. Yeah, because to be fair, everything everywhere all at once, it's really for like the middle class. 
And I think that the middle class almost felt unseen because they didn't feel, they, they actually, the middle class people consume a lot of content and they're very like media savvy. They're on all the websites, Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes and everything like that. But CRA was almost more about like the rich. It's like uh, wealth porn. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously it's not like a hood story or anything like yeah. that. No, I mean, to this day, I think the amount of eyeballs that watch Crazy Rich Asians is still larger than this movie. Obviously, it's still grossed more. Yeah, because that was so, like pop music. So this more, is like, yeah. that, you know, Kendrick. More people have seen Crazy Rich Asians technically, but the people and the love for everything, everywhere, all at once is like unmatched. It's honestly unmatched, man. I've never seen, I did not know that there was crazy K-pop stands, but for this movie. Oh. And that's what they have. And, and they never felt that towards any piece of Asian American content before. Because yeah. unless you were actually a crazy rich Asian, like from Kevin Kwan's background, why would you literally be able to empathize with that old money world? Evelyn, all that I ever knew I could be was kind. Just be kind, everybody. Be kind. Where do you think that this is going to take Asian entertainment, finally, Andrew? Let's just say they win an Oscar. I'm thinking Michelle Yeoh wins an Oscar. I, I think they win it for sure at least one. Key... 50-50 on key because there's uh, some stiff competition. Best picture, I'm also 50-50 on that. I don't think the Academy's going to like want to give it to something that like frenetic and silly, even though they're people. I could see them winning some editing like awards or things like uh, that. Cinematography award, possibly, you know, just because like the amount of directing and the shots were crazy. But yeah, where do I think it takes, man? I think it's set. I hope it inspires a lot of people to make more films. And, but I do think it's a little intimidating in the fact of how good it was. Yeah, it was like the first time you ate a Lady M yeah. cake with the 27 it, layers of matcha. I was like, ow, what is this? And, and David, earlier we were kind of debating on whether you consider this quote and unquote an Asian American film. Even though the characters are all Asian, they do speak an Asian language, and there's an Asian director, there was obviously a whole back end to it that involved so many other types of people, you know, non-Asians, Same right? team from where's Scott Pilgrim, right? Right, yeah. right, right. So, yeah, I think it, it is it is like a joint effort. It's like a, uh, but I, I do, I consider it an Asian American film, even though it doesn't go through like the Asian American Film Festival, but really, this didn't belong there, right? This was, <laughs> it was like on another level. But I guess like, to me, it's almost like a, Man, what's like a, it's like a hybrid model. I, I compare it's a beautiful it to, hybrid. the best thing I could compare it to is either Frank Ocean's first album, the Alpha Integra, or uh, Tyler, the creator's first album, or Childish Gambino's first album, not his mixtapes, where people are just like, I don't know. I think, I think it'll inspire more, but it may be tough to match this as the gold standard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially with all, if your whole back end is Asian, your whole back end watch mechanism is Asian. Yeah. Anyway, guys, there's a lot of filmmaking talk we could do. If you guys like this video, I'm sure we could make a hundred more, but I didn't want to like leave out everybody who's not like a super deep media uh, uh, head like us. Let, let us know in the comments down below what you think about the movie. All right, is it truly one of the greatest movies you've ever seen? And obviously, it's a personal opinion. Anybody, this can yeah. be their favorite movie of all time. And talking about for what reason too, yeah. because a lot of people liked it just because it was the biggest Asian American movie ever, but also you could like it for a bunch of I other mean, reasons. Honestly, the action was good. There was good comedy. There was ridiculous moments. There's flying dildos and there's like, kung fu and all this like <laughs> muay thai and then there's like weird like symbolism and then crazy costumes there's some gore there's a lot of story like there and then there's old asian people and then there's hot dog fingers guys there's just they just so didn't have anything azn though i would have liked yeah. some like an yeah. azn and, cousin acknowledging it, the enclave life and since it's at the end of the video i'll acknowledge that I, I i it did take me some time to appreciate this movie on the level that i do now because at first i was like oh wow i would have switched this character out why is the husband gotta be like this or like he seems a little bit pushover but actually it all falls in line together and uh, honestly it's just it's a great movie so product market fit man let, grand let, slam sometimes let, Hey, these historical MLB moments where somebody hits a grand slam to win the World Series, man. There's a lot of things that got to fall into place for it to happen. Let us know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below. Well, how do you think it'll do on the Oscars? Is it overrated, underrated, rightfully rated? And until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.